Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Every Monday, we have a conversation with the TTPS to enlighten us and, of course, keep us secure. This morning, Inspector Michelle Lewis joins us to talk about youth violence. Good morning, Inspector, and welcome. Good morning. Good morning to the both of you. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have Always. you with us on the show. It's going to have enough females head this morning. It's International Women's Week. International mm -hmm. Women's Week. So we wish them to be all. How are you doing this morning? I am good, I am good. And this morning we have a great topic, as yeah. you mentioned, um, youth violence. Which is something that is so important because we see things um, trending on social media. We hear a lot mm -hmm. of conversation, but we don't get straight into the facts. So let's start there. Can you share with us exactly the proper definition of youth violence? So youth violence is the intentional use of physical force or power to threaten or harm another young person. And youth is considered between the age of 10 and 24 in this context. Okay. Okay. So you would realize that it covers children who are also in school. Mm -hmm. So youth violence also includes school violence. Right. As well. Definitely one that we've seen go viral quite a bit mm -hmm. uh, with the recent uh, with the advent of social media, but that led us to multiple conversations that explore possible causes. I am not a parent, but I do have youth around me. Mm -hmm. What are some of the key factors that contribute to youth violence? A lot of the, um, one of the main outcomes, mm -hmm. um, bad outcomes I should say, is the homicides that we have as a result of. And when you look at youth violence, you look at bullying, you look at um, fighting, you look at gang related activities. Okay. And all those associate with youth violence. And so when you look at the prevention of it and what we can do to stop it, right. you have to look first at what causes the violence among young people. Mm -hmm. and the violence among young people is not only by youth themselves, mm -hmm. but it could be by other persons as well. Mm -hmm. And a youth um, can be in impacted either as a victim, as a perpetrator, or as a witness. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? So. We just spoke about, you spoke about the correlation between youth violence and gang violence. Mm -hmm. We've spoken about some of the causes, and I'm sure there are more that we can definitely get into in the conversation. But one of my questions now is, how do you treat with youth violence, particularly, especially when we see it becoming so vi well, violent, morbid, extreme? How do you treat with that? Because these are minors that are covered by the majority of this age group. So how is that treated with by the TTPS? Well, by the Trinidad Tobago Police Service, we have the police shoot clubs, we have community engagement and outreach programs that we have. We do health fairs as well. Because a lot of times you look at the mental health aspect as well. If you could remember, there was a primary school in Port of Spain where the police service, the victim and witness support unit went in and did some counseling after the children were traumatized right. by the firearm and the fact that they were laying on the floor in the school and the teachers keeping them calm. So those are some of the things that the police service will do in relation to some of the impacts, negative mm -hmm. impact as a result of violence in school right. or youth violence. Um, and the causes, as you know, is it comes from the community and it comes from the home and the right. family so that the environment that the child is brought up in impacts the child and the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so when a child goes to school, for example, and that child is bullied, the child, that child can himself be a bully to another child. Mm -hmm. A child being physically or verbally abused at home can take that same thing and replicate it on another child, mm -hmm. and so it continues. And so to prevent some of those is where you have um, agencies coming in who look at that, research it, and then try to mitigate that and to bring that child in a stronger footing. So where that child, for example, has a strong self-esteem, um, where that child is in an environment where um, there's productive and positive after-school um, program, where that child is um, exposed to mentorship and persons who have that level of development and positive um, attitude to the positive into that child because there are the gang mentoring, so mm -hmm. we're looking at the mentorship of a child to go a particular way. Those are things that prevent um, youth violence from continuing. Right. Now you've spoken about some of, well, as you say, some of the measures to thwart it, but piggybacking on Natasha's previous question, the reality is that we can't save everybody, that it does exist, which means there are some people that seep through the cracks, so to speak. And in that case, because they are minors, it has to warrant a different type of approach 
once we get to the point of them being violent, what does that look like from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service? Beyond the measures, the preventative measures, the measures post-violence. Well, the post-violence are what we see in are what we see in on social media, what we see in the schools, right. what we see in the communities, on the streets. Um, it's you know, and it's the end result is the homicide, mm -hmm. and because a lot of it are committed by young persons. And if it is that they are not between that 10 to 14 age bracket, they're involved in some way and they're being groomed mm -hmm. to be gang members. Right. And so those are the impacts and implications of it. Now, we have parents who also um, support um, youth violence. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so um, parenting workshops helps to put parents on another footing to show that this is not the way to upbring your child or to cause your child to be to bring up your child mm. and then you have to change the mentality of that parent for it to go down to the child okay. yeah. and so as I would have said there are those who do seep through the cracks mm -hmm. so how do authorities treat with those who seep through the cracks who you see performing violent acts at the age of 11 12 years old what steps are taken to either discipline or um, re-socialize that individual so through the schools, there's the suspension and the expulsion program. And then you have the MyLAT and the MyLAT because the MyPAT hasn't started back as yet. You have the MyLAT which exists. Right. You also have through the police youth clubs, the court will send children um, who are considered um, high risk children or chins, children in need of care. Okay. okay. And, and an abbreviation. Yeah. Easy to remember. <laughs> <laughs> and so those children are sent to the police youth clubs throughout, whether it's in Sandy Grandis, mm -hmm. throughout. Right. And so that is a, like a rehabilitation for the child. Um, further to that, as we know, a child or anybody that can be charged in Trinidad and Tobago over the eight, over, can be charged once the eight years and over. So once you have tried other types of methods and it does not work, or the offense that the child has committed is one that the child can be charged for forthwith, then criminal charges can be laid against that child. You Did want you to ask again the age? Eight yeah. years old. Eight years old. Wow. I don't think that's widely known. No. That a child can be charged at eight mm -hmm. years totally old based on our legislature. Mm -hmm. yeah. Totally incompatible. It's in the law. Wow. Eight that the years child old. has the mental ability to. Mm -hmm. So that's what you look at. You look at the mental ability, yeah. particularly to, let's say, premeditate something. Yes. So, okay. yes. So, granted that that is such a young age, such a tender age, can you describe a little bit as to the relationship shared between the TTPS, if any, and the Children's Authority? Because we have had many conversations with them, particularly on the show recently, mm -hmm. about their intervention in violent situations, be it domestic or otherwise. So is there a, a relationship shared between the TTPS and the Children's Authority, and what is it? There's a very strong relationship between the TTPS and Children's Authority, particularly the Child Protection Unit. Okay. So when reports are made against a child, that the child is the victim mm -hmm. in the first instance, right, as opposed to being the perpetrator. Right. Um, the Children's Authority is the, the governing body that will do the intervention primarily in the police service to the support is the secondary um, support through the victim and witness support unit. Okay. And so the Children's Authority would look at all aspects, will visit the home, um, if they have to move the child from that place, they will do it. If they need the support of the police to go in and move the child because of the, um, the situation, be it you know a volatile one, right. so then the police will go with them. But the children's authority are the ones who are responsible for that and doing the follow-up to the child. So in the case now where the child is poss possibly a perpetrator, mm -hmm. are, I'd like to say rare occasion, but mm -hmm. who knows, what role does the children's authority and the TTPS take on? The, the Children's Authority still has to work with that child as a, as a the, the perpetrator. Now we have in Trinidad the Children's Court. So you have the Children's Court right in Port of Spain here and then you have one in South. I think I wanted to be able to know, right? And the Children's Court has a system set up where you will have children who will adjudicate on matters depending on the type of matter it is. And then you have the one with the master and, the, and like I said, the chins, so that the child would um, be placed either in a youth club um, a homework center or somewhere there, depending on your offense. And then further to that, then of course. Possibly being judged. Yeah, mm. it has um, the juvenile center at, at 
Aruka. Aruka. Okay. Yeah. So there are different aspects depending on the level of crime or youth violence that was perpetrated. Understood. Now, one of the things that we've heard, the phrase we've heard a lot in this conversation is the youth police clubs, right? Mm -hmm. Police youth clubs in Trinidad and Tobago. Let's talk about access to the police youth clubs. Can anybody walk in and join? Is there a process? How do we get more information and get involved and send our children there from a young age? Police youth club, the age group is from five mm -hmm. to 28 years old. So it covers the age of youth violence. For sure. <laughs> and we encourage parents. So you have over 100 police youth clubs throughout Trinidad and Tobago. So there is one near to practically every community. Mm -hmm. I mean, in every police station district, there's a police youth club. So all that parent has to do, you can either communicate, contact the um, Community Policing Secretariat at Riverside Plaza, which is the head office, mm -hmm. at 6254565, 6254565, mm -hmm. or in any police station district, you just go in and you ask the officer, where's the nearest police youth club? Mm -hmm. And they will let you know. They will let you know the time that the youth club meets, um, who's the officer in charge, and when they can come back. It's that simple. And so when they go, the officers will give them the form, the club leader will give them the form, because all the police youth clubs are managed by serving police officers. Right. Right? So it gives the child that um, safe space to be in. Mm -hmm. um, where that child has the support of a police officer, the parent also can talk to the police officer about um, discipline issues that the child will have, um, temper tantrum that the child will be displaying right. that show that the child is going on a particular path. So the police youth clubs really do a great intervention in relation to bringing children back um, from on the streets and now. And yes. Mm -hmm. So we've spoken about the actual item, youth violence. We talked about causes and we've certainly explored solutions. But I think the biggest takeaway this morning has to be the knowledge of what exists in terms of our legislature mm -hmm. and the partnerships that exist to combat it. So we really, really appreciate this morning's conversation, Inspector. I mean, as always, but particularly, I am taking away some big learnings this morning. Remind me again of that number that we can call, though, to find the police youth clubs near you. It's 6254565. Yes, that is the Community Police in Secretariat mm -hmm. at Riverside Plaza, Sixth Floor Riverside Plaza. Mm -hmm. That's the head office for youth clubs. And then, of course, in every station district, you can just walk in and ask any officer and they will let you know. It's wonderful to know we have all yes. these resources available. And as you said, walking away with some information, because when you say said eight years old, both of us went. Hold yeah, on. What? Was that a type <laughs> But 18? a lot of times mm -hmm. the police and the court will not um, go a harsh way in that regard because they would know that the child would have been impacted by something, right? Most times they would look at another intervention. Of but the law really says from eight. Mm. Yeah. Well, we are here till 8, and we will continue to give you information that you can use to make your, mo your Monday morning even better. Thank you very much for joining us this morning, Inspector. Thanks for being here. And of course, to you who are joining us, you can stick around because your birthdays are coming up after these messages.